Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a card that is part of a blog hop. Simon Says Stamp just had their April 2024 release called Celebrate. I will have a link to the new release directly below the video so you can click on over and check out all the new products. There is a ton. Lots of fabulous things. So for my blog hop card, I kind of went with my current little obsession again, which is want 3D embossing folders. Love. Distress watercolor pencils and um, like background stamping, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Just fun. Love it. Love it. There's something therapeutic about painting like no line coloring on 3D embossing folders. I've done several videos doing that. And yeah, because this is part of a blog hop, I will have my blog post like I always do linked below the video as well. And then if you go on over there, there is like codes and all the other stops on the hop will have links to with tons of inspiration, giveaways, all the fun things. So definitely expand the description box. As always, I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. All my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you use one of my links and you end up placing an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you guys. And that's what helps pay the bills, keeps the garage heater going, which always turns on the minute I start filming like intros and voiceovers. <laughs> but hey, it keeps me from freezing. That's a good thing. So anywho, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made this card. So the first thing I did was pulled out one of my oldie but goodie favorites that I've used in a bajillion videos. This is the friendship text background stamp. This is just going to add, you know, a bit, of, a bit of texture to my background. And I just put it face up on my work surface and I'm inking it up with a very light green ink. This is Simon's Celery Positively Saturated Ink. And then I'm pressing a piece of Distress watercolor paper onto it. Just use my fingers. I don't need it to stamp perfectly, although I did get a very good impression. But again, perfection's overrated and this is just for the background. So then I'm going to run this through um, with the one of the new embossing folders, which is the, the Beaufort, Beaufort, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, floral frame. It's a floral frame. <laughs> I lightly misted the back of the watercolor paper with water that just softens the fibers a bit so I get a better embossed impression. And then with my Anna Griffin Empress machine and the Simon Says Stamp 3D embossing folders, I just need one cutting plate and the folder. So I ran that through and embossed it. And this embossing folder comes with um, a little set of wafer dies that die cut the three floral shapes. So I die cut a scrap of the Distress watercolor paper with those wafer dies and then I'm just taping them into place in the folder with some of my tonic like craft perfect um, die tape because it's low tack enough to hold it in place but not so sticky that like the pressure of the machine is going to like fuse the tape to the watercolor paper. So I got those all cut out and embossed because I will be watercoloring these as soon as I'm done, like watercoloring the main, the main image. And to do my watercoloring, I'm using my Distress watercolor pencils, which I have in a palette. I will link to my playlist at the end of this video that has all the videos I've done using the Distress watercolor pencils. In the beginning of that playlist, I have an entire video showing how I like set up this palette. So you definitely don't have to do this. You don't have to use them this way. You also don't have to use Distress watercolor pencils. You could use other watercolor pencils. You could also use regular watercolors, markers. I've done all sorts of things <laughs> over uh, embossed backgrounds like this. So I'm just using the watercolor pencils because I used them recently and, you know, back on that kick again. Plus also this month, and I'll have that code in the description box below the video for the month of April, Simon Says Stamp. Um, there's a 20% off code for Distress Watercolor Pencils. So I'll put that in the description box below the video. So the other thing I did slightly differently is I usually, like pretty much always, use my little Distress uh, Detail Water Brush when I'm using these. It's just a convenience thing. This time I just use a little paintbrush. This is a little size four 
paintbrush, which is still a tiny bit bigger than my watercolor brush. That's why I pulled this out because like some of those larger leaves, etc. I'm like, eh, it'd just be faster. And then once I started doing this, because I, I was going to switch to the water brush, because again, just have it, but I didn't, I just kept using it like this. So I just mix a lot of this. I don't really, one, I also don't have any of my colors labeled. <laughs> Most of the distress colors I know just on site, like exactly what it is, but um, I'm only mentioning that because I know some people like when I state specifically that, you know, what colors I'm using, but with stuff like this, I'm, I'm not because I'm also mixing them um, because there's a lot of different uh, greenery that is embossed into here and you always want to mix up your greens, use different shades, add different colors to change the shades if you don't have a lot of greens because that gives it more variety and looks just looks better because really if there's a ton of greenery it's never going to be the same shade of green so I was mixing greens together I was adding a little bit of I think it was mermaid lagoon you know to to make it more of like an aqua blue sort of green I added a bit of brown to the green like I was all over the place just mixing it up right in my palette don't care um, cause when it all dries, I can just reactivate it, you know, next time I use this and like reuse it or wipe it out, whatever works. So I did all the greenery and then I ended up using like shaded lilac, which is with the distress watercolor pencils, it is a very like kind of blue shade, which is really pretty. So I just mentioned that because I was originally going to do like pinks when I like was mentally, you know, planning out this card and then blues took over and I'm okay with that. I just don't use blue very often. I don't know what it is, but I ended up with blues and then I did, um, you know, kind of aqua shades for these, um, like daisy type florals on the actual background. I just slapped the color on these ones that I've die cut because you're not really going to see much, but if you know, just the little bits that are peeking out. So I, that's why I just slapped that kind of aqua shade. And then the actual die cut and embossed ones, these ones I put a little bit more effort in, but also with all of it, I just slapped the color on, you know, try not to overthink it. Like I always say, do as I say, not as I do, because I overthink everything. <laughs> but yeah, once you do things like this more, than, more often than not, you start getting comfortable with it and it's just kind of fun. So after I painted everything, I let it all dry, which didn't take long. And then I'm putting everything back in the embossing folder and running it through again. I don't always do this, but I find especially doing things like watercolor on things that I've used an embossing folder on, it does sort of soften and kind of flatten out the detail. So taking the, the extra, you know, few seconds to re-emboss everything because it just, it just fits right back into the folder. You know, it's almost like clicks into place. And then I run it through again and that just presses all that detail back that I might have lost here and there with the amount of water I was using, etc. And it does make a difference. I, I think it does anyway. So I re-embossed everything. And then I took the, the background and I trimmed it down just a bit because the panel I had used was A2 size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I trimmed this down to about four by five and a quarter. It's just slightly smaller than an A2 card front. And then after I trimmed it down, I pulled out some Perfection Positively Saturated Ink and a blending brush. And I'm just going to blend this around the edges of this entire panel just to give it that little extra something. It's going to give it a little bit more depth. It's going to kind of finish off those edges a little bit. So I just went around, kind of worked my way around. And then without a whole lot of ink left on the brush, I was also kind of just running it around the perimeter there just to kind of fill in some of the little areas and whatnot. And I'm not worried about like the ink getting on top of the watercolor or anything like that. Cause it's like green on green, not a big deal. So after I did that, um, I very carefully removed this tape. Like I said, this is a very low tack tape, but it's been like, pressed into the paper more than once because I ran it through a couple times. So I just very carefully removed it from those um, die cut pieces. And then I decided to pop these up with just some thin foam squares just to give them a little bit more dimension. You know, it just, it just pops them up just a smidge. So I popped little foam squares on the back of this and then just lined these up over their respective little florals there. And then once those are popped into place, I'm of course going to add splatter. <laughs> uh, how, how can we not? Honestly. So going to put this into my splat box. And the first bit of splatter, I'm going to use just the 
the Distress Watercolor Pencils, that um, shaded lilac color, and just a little tiny brush, this little size, little tiny size two brush. So I, you know, mix some of that up, and then I'm just going to splatter that more around, again, kind of the perimeter of this um, background, but like I always say, even when you're somewhat trying to control splatter, it's still going to go where it wants to go. You know, you just, you just learn to embrace it. <laughs> I've had a lot of you mentioning that, that, you know, you're still very hesitant. You know, you want to splatter. It intimidates you. Trust me, been there. You know, I, I 100% understand it. Like I used to see other makers do that. And I was like, man, how, how do you know where to put it? How do you know how to like make it look as good as it does? You just get used to it after a while and you just embrace it. And then you enjoy the chaos. And you guys know, look at my splat box. Look at it. There's like 5,000 layers of splatter in there. <laughs> Along with my work service, my camera, all my equipment, everything. It's just, it's a mess. I love it. I'm fine with it. Anyway. The rest of the splatter was uh, my my go-to favorite, the Picket Fence um, liquid paper splatter, liquid watercolor paper splatter. What is it called again? I, my brain always stops. Picket Fence Studios, paper splatter, watercolor, liquid white snowflake. <laughs> that just gave it shimmer. Love. Added that with my fan brush, set that aside to dry. While it was drying, I die cut some scraps of soft navy cardstock using the unbelievably popular not surprised uh just a note wafer die set by cc design this was also part of this release it as of doing this voiceover i this is now on pre-order because it sold out so quickly i'm not surprised because i'm going to use the stamp set too not surprised it's great kathy zielski is the best we all love her she makes the greatest like wafer dies and stamp sets and all the things and her font choices and word choices are great and we love it. So I am not surprised that the set sold out so quickly, <laughs> but I, you know, I had already used it. So yeah, it, it they'll restock it as soon as possible. Anyway, I stacked the layers together with craft tacky glue because I die cut three scraps with the word wafer die. I didn't use the outline there is an outline you can see it there on the screen but I use just the words for this card and then once I had them stacked together I'm adhering them directly to the background again with just craft tacky glue so once I've got all that in place I can get that one um, lined up and then you can skip especially if you're not using the outline I almost left off the dot to the j on just a note but I decided to add it because I just think it kind of finished it off I like how it looks, but the way this is, you could skip it if you wanted to, but I use mine because I saved them. You know, I stick them in my little triangle tray because otherwise they just, they flip off onto the floor and you never find them again. So got everything adhered. Here's a stamp set that I mentioned, this big six by eight stamp set that has a ton of sentiments in it for all sorts of occasions. So yeah, this one is, if it's not sold out by the time this video goes up, it will be, I'm sure. But again, they'll restock it. It's a good one. So I chose one of the sentiments. I went with birthday, but it was like the way the card front, everything like this could have been sympathy, like any occasion, really. So I stamped that onto the inside of my card base with the new Dusk ink. Because yes, people have been asking me about that too. If Simon's going to come out with like navy blue shades in the positively saturated inks. And yes, these were planned to be released quite some time ago. And then they had some, they did some tweaking to get it the, the colors the way they wanted them. So we now have them and I'll have a link the, it, to the new release. You can check them out below the video. And then um, another little embellishment. This is another oldie but goodie favorite die set that I've used a million times. This is the Flickering Butterflies Wafer Die from Simon Says Stamp. And I die cut just some tonic... Um, they call it pearled silver. It looks silver online. It's not. It's this just nice kind of white shimmery vellum. And I die cut the butterflies from that. And then I'm just adhering it around my card front here, which is little tiny dabs of craft tacky glue. And once I get them adhered to the card front, the remaining ones, I'm going to adhere to the inside of the card just to give it that little extra, that little extra something. So I'm going to adhere those into place 
And like I always say, vellum, adhesive shows through vellum, but with something like this that's so small, I find that, you know, this tiny dot of glue doesn't faze me at all. If they were any bigger, I would probably put like a little jam or something just to hide the adhesive. But with these, I find it's not necessary. So I adhered them into place. And then as my final little embellishment, there is the, the dusk embellishments, which are just confetti similar to the new ink colors. So kind of perfect. So I kind of sprinkled those or figured out where I wanted them, you know, on this card front. And then once I was happy with where I had placed all the things and it, it took me a while. Sometimes it doesn't take me this long at other times. It's like you'll just sit and fiddle <laughs> for the longest time. But usually with the magic of video editing, I just edit all that out because you guys can't see the smoke coming out my ears, you know, as I'm trying to figure out all the random things. But anywho. Once I was happy with where I had them, I adhered them into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I'm going to pair this with one of Simon's soft navy envelopes. And that's going to finish off this card. So you can see that shimmer from the, the splatter. And I've got all of that texture going on with the embossing folder and the little butterflies and the fabulous CZ design sentiments. This was really fun to make. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. So if you just expand that, you can check it out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.